A meeting of City Council to order for Monday, April 6, 2020. Uh, again, really um, uh, unusual circumstances for uh, our community and our province and our country and the world uh, with the coronavirus. And so it's as obvious, uh, all of our councillors are phoning in this morning and I appreciate everybody um, handling the obligations of a councillor and our staff in that regard. We do have our CAO, our CFO, and our corporate officer, as well as the recording secretary. But everyone else is on the phone, and our other uh, senior staff are on the phone this morning. And we're going to be uh, trying to do our best to handle the meetings in this uh, regard for the uh, period of time that uh, we're in this situation. For the benefit of folks, for our delegations who we don't want in uh, coming in for their their own protection and being able to stay safe, but to be able to follow along. We are using social media and we're using Facebook Live as a way to live stream our meetings. Um, it is a one-way uh, piece. It's, we're not able to answer questions, so if people are following along, uh, it is for information to be able to follow along, but at this point we don't have the ability to respond to anybody that is asking us questions on social media. And so just as a little introduction. So we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we have no delegations this morning and item three on our agenda is new councillor business. Uh, 3.1, we have Councillor Javetkov uh, with a memo. Okay, so, Councillor Javetkov, go ahead. Okay, this is about uh, golf water rate. And I'd like to move that the city of Dawson Creek reduce the uh, rate for water back to 460 cubic meter for the MP. Thank you. So for those that uh, may or may not have been able to hear the uh, motion, Councillor Javekov, uh, that the City of Dawson Creek reduced the rate for bulk potable water back to 450 a cube until the end of the year. Do I have a seconder for the motion? No seconder. Councillor Parslow, thank you. Discussion? I can uh, make some comments on it. Thank you. Uh, what I've done here is I've used uh, a one year um, use of water for one one of the clients who uses water here in town. And um, based on the volume that, that's uh, been used at one year, and this is just an example, different in um, revenue to the city is uh, about $46,000. Or actually, it's about thirty-seven thousand dollars. So, if if we continue to sell the water at uh, the full rate, the, the rate that we get by close to we need get uh, a revenue which is in, is increased by thirty-seven thousand um, dollars. If we don't, if we reduce the rate to back to 450, we make uh, that much less, but we do still have revenue, and the the um, increase from 450 to 570 was basically an arbitrary number that we selected based on uh, what other communities are selling water for. So it's not the same as, as the utility water where we actually calculated the actual cost of production and that's what we're charging so that we're recovering what we invest into it. Uh, with the bulk potable, we're, we're actually gaining uh, even that 450 a cubic meter, we're gaining 250 a cubic meter. So to me, it's, uh, it just makes sense to go back until these uh, predicaments are over, like the virus and, uh, and the oil price starts to increase again, puts the industry back on its feet. Um, I think it would be a good move. Thank you, Councillor. Further comments, further questions? Administration? Uh, sorry, Charlie. Go ahead, Charlie. Councillor Parzal. Yes, um, I think Paul basically uh, summarized uh, my thinking on this as well, but 
I just wanted to make sure from staff that um, um, I was the, the things that Paul said uh, aligned with the thinking that went into this price increase. My my assumption are that uh, with the other water rates, we basically increase them by a cost of living uh, adjustment, uh, which would also reflect our increased cost through compensation to our staff, etc., and buying chemicals. But in the case of this industrial, um, it was uh, a reflection on the price that other communities who are selling water in this way would, would charge you. And I just wanted to add that verified by, by staff. Thank you. Further comments? Administration? Thank you, Your Worship, and through you to uh, Councillor Parslow and Councillor Javakov. If this was uh, a discussion of Council some time ago uh, to look at that. The water utility uh, as the sewer utility has to be a self-liquidating utility. It has to fund itself. So this was a determination based on a number of factors. I will look to our financial chief financial officer, but it was what the costs were in other jurisdictions. They looked at a number of factors and then put it there. Um, so whatever council's wish is, um, we can accommodate that. There will be an impact on the water utility without question. We would have to uh, do some work uh, on that to give you the exact amount on the impact based on uh, the people that use bulk water sales. There's only a handful of them, if that. But I would uh, ask Flavia, our Chief Financial Officer, if she has any further comments. There was work done on this. This wasn't a number just grabbed out of the air by any means, uh, to be sure. Uh, and it was supported earlier by Council, but recognizing the challenging times we're in and the unique circumstances, I know everything is going to be looked at at this time. Flavia, do you have anything to add? Actually not. No? <laughs> no. We've covered that? Yep. Thank you. So um, the projections for our utility, um, in terms of keeping the utility whole for the year and the budget, we offset our building our utility reserves, we, our operating costs for the utility. Um, what Will this impact the overall health of the utility in terms of what we have set for the budget for uh, 2020 and beyond by adjusting this rate? You, uh, because of the effect of 37,000 reduction, definitely is going to affect the surplus that we are sending for the uh, uh, water reserve. Uh, but still, considering that would be only one uh, one case, uh, we would still be on the plus. However, if we go not just everybody uh, to the previous rate. Right? Then uh, we will need to analyze it because it be, may bring our surplus to a deficit for this year. Thank you. And that, and that to me is the only issue that we'll want to make sure of is that we uh, ensure the utility is healthy and, and uh, it projects the uh, managing the utility that it operates on its own. Mm -hmm. Blair? Your Council. Worship, with that, I and mean, we have the ability to pull that together and put a report together. We don't have that uh, here today because yeah. this is the first motion, first time we've had that motion put forward. Uh, whatever the wish of Council is, we will ensure we accommodate that. But if uh, the motion is passed today, uh, then we will bring you back the impact. We don't know what it is as of sure. today. <laughs> Thank you. Further comments, Council? Further questions? Are you ready for yes, the. Go, go ahead, Councillor Parswell. Um, my understanding is that uh, at the situation right now in our community, there is only one business that's doing this sort of work now. Is that correct? That other companies cease to be operating in our community? That is, uh, through your worship, that's one we would have to, through the uh, work we do, determine that. But I believe you're correct. There was, I believe, three at one time. Uh, and we may be down to just one drawing right now. And uh, But again, that would be the work in a report we would have to bring back to Council. Well, personally, you know, it, uh, I, once I support the business, I would like to see that it was I, I want to know that impact, uh, so, so I, I'm speaking, I guess, to Mayor here, I would, 
I would, uh, and my inclination is to wait before finalizing this until we've had that impact study presented to council. John, I think what administration are saying to us is this 35,000 or 37,000 uh, potentially of impact based on current usage um, is uh, going to be managed through the utility and they'll bring back that report for us. This, this motion is only until the end of the year and so through the course of the next coming months there's going to be a bunch of work that's going to be required and uh, we'll bring that back. Brenda? Through your worship, I'm just uh, wanting to confirm that if this motion is passed then um, that's not a request to council to bring back a report. Not so at this point. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the motion should be amended just to refer the motion to staff to bring back. Okay, thank you. And so the CA, uh, our corporate officer's uh, recommendation is that we, if there are those concerns, that we would direct administration as an amendment to uh, bring back a report by administration on the water utility uh, by uh, in the coming months. Am I hearing that correct? Your Worship, yes, through you, that would be the situation. We could bring it back relatively soon. Um, the impact, the passing of this motion will mean that it is completed right. and if Council adopts this and votes in favor of it, the report will be for information sure. purposes. Yeah. Thank you. Council, uh, could I have a, somebody to move the amendment? Uh, I'll move that. So, Councillor uh, Earl, do I have a seconder? I'll second it. Councillor Wilbur, thank you. Discussion on the um, amended motion, on the amendment of the motion? Are you ready for the question? All in favor? And you only need to vote in the opposed, so any opposed? Any uh, amendment? Sorry? sorry? Uh, and on the motion itself, uh, any opposed? The motion carries as amended. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, any other new councillor business? Your Worship, it's Councillor Wilbur. I don't have new business other than uh, thank you to the community for doing their part to flatten the curve. But there is a lot of feedback coming off your mic, and I'm just wondering if one of the volume, either on the phone uh, box, needs to be turned down or the main volume for the mic. But it's excruciating. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. We're, we're uh, finding that, and we'll try and uh, see if we can find a way to adjust it. To, uh, and get it fixed. Thank you. And thank you for that comment. Um, item four, minutes. So the minutes of our special meeting of council of March 17th for adoption. Move. Move, Move Councillor Parslow, second. I'll second. Councillor Earl, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. And the minutes of our regular meeting of council of March 23rd for adoption. Okay. Councillor Wilbur, second. I'll second. Councillor Earl, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. And the minutes of our special meeting of Council of March 30th for adoption, please. Councillor Parslow, thank you. Second? second. Councillor Earl, thank you. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, any business arising out of the minutes for anyone? Thank you. Correspondence. Uh, item 6.1, we have letter from Hong Kim from the Travelers Inn in Dawson Creek regarding the request to waive local area service project number uh, 1904. Um, do we want to have... So, thank you, Councillor Parslow. Second? Second. Councillor Wilbur? Any opposed? It's carried. Uh, can I pass it over to administration? Thank you, Your Worship. We've received this letter um, requesting uh, leniency on the paving portion. The and I believe Kevin's on here. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the paving portion is not on here. This we waive that. The uh, none of the residents or businesses paid for the asphalt. Uh, we've made that as a directive on this road to get it completed. The owner's payment is dealt with or tied to the new lighting that was approved on the street. And I don't believe this came forward prior to this meeting at the uh, review panel's consideration as well. So uh, the individual is asking for forgiveness uh, of that as well as um, 
entitled to compensation for loss of business. That has never been the case uh, for local governments uh, with that. So it will be council's discretion on this, but the payment for asphalt is not included in that. The options of the 240 feet of frontage are to cover the lighting that was agreed to to be paid for by the residents and businesses on the street. And that 240 feet is $983.86 for the lighting then, am I reading that correct? No, it will be $8,392. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, it is so much a foot and then multiplied by the 240 feet. You have the opportunity to pay it in a lump sum as does everybody in a local improvement bylaw okay. or over 10 years. Thank you. Thank you. Council? Uh, Councilor Wilber, uh, for you to staff, so I'm a little confused because I'm looking at the letter that the property owner um, attached and it specifically says uh, property owner get the cost of paving. So where does it in this letter to the property owner uh, talk about lighting? Uh, the property owner's letter to us, sorry, just so we'll give it a second the property owner letters letter to us is speaking to the asphalt portion so he was I, I'm going to suggest somewhat uh, unaware then that the pavement portion has already been borne by the city of Dawson Creek this is just the lighting is cost I'm referring to his attachment of his actual invoice to his temporary court pardon me I will defer to Kevin, but I believe it's the lighting. Kevin? Yes, uh, it's through your ship. Yes, the letter had a mistake about saying paving, and then we corrected that. Uh, we contacted everyone and said uh, uh, that was a uh, was a mistake. That was specifically for street light. Thank you. So a corrected uh, information went back out to all the property owners, indicating that uh, inadvertently the letters originally said it was for paving. Um, but the $8,392 is for their share of the lighting, not the paving. Yes. Correct. Thank you for clarification. Thank you, Councillor. Council? Well, I, would, I would like to move that um, a letter be sent to this gentleman uh, reiterating what the bill is for and that we do not, um, uh, what's the word, to compensate businesses for the loss of business due to uh, low growth or low growth. Thank you. Uh, do I have a seconder for the motion? I'll second it. Councillor Kemp, thank you. Discussion? Well, just, um, I mean, obviously I'm quite empathic to anybody who feels this way, but there was access, continued access to his business. Um, it wasn't as if he was uh, marooned and uh, proving what loss of that business was due to the paving on 112 would be very difficult for him to do that, regardless of the principle. Thank you, and I, I would uh, expect that there is no provision um, for anyone to, uh, or any community, or any municipality or local government to, to within their uh, capital projects or within their projects to pay for a loss of income or loss of business uh, as a result of projects that we undertake to improve the city. That is correct, Your Worship. Thank you. Further discussion, Council? You ready for the question? Opposed? The motion carries, thank you. Uh, 6.2, we have a letter from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and the Union of BC Municipalities uh, for the 2020 uh, Small Community Funds Voluntary Dues. Motion. It's Councillor Wilber. I would move to pay the invoice of $127.87 for the FCM travel fund that supports 
directors. Thank you, Councillor Wilbur. Second? Councillor Parslow, thank you. Discussion? Any opposed? It's carried, thank you. 6.3, we have a letter from Sue Pospicu for the president of the Northern Hel uh, Trails Heritage Society regarding request for heritage information from the city. I would move that we uh, grant the request contained in this letter uh, inquiring about further studies to the uh, 2000 and uh, whatever letter study, it was a 2007 study, and uh, if we have any policies that are relevant that they be forwarded to them. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? I'll second. Councillor Earl, thank you. Discussion? Uh, ready I, for don't the believe that, I don't believe there's been any subsequent studies. Uh, the only one I've seen is the 2007 done that was, uh, I think, commissioned uh, under the direction of Ryan McIver. I'm not aware of anything myself, so I can't speak to it. Thank you. Ready for the question, Council? Any opposed? The motion's carried. Uh, 6.4 is a letter from Curtis York of Curtis York Trucking, and this was in regards to the bulk water uh, pricing that we dealt with under council business. Do I have a motion to receive for information? So moved. So moved. Move, Councillor Wilbur. Thank you. Second, Councillor Parslow. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. It's carried. 6.5, we have an email from Trista Spencer, the Executive Director of the United Way of Northern BC, regarding a request for support for the Northern BC COVID Fund. We received her information. Thank you, Councillor Parslow. Second? I'll second. Councillor Earl, thank you. All those in, opposed? That's carried, thank you. 6.6, 6, we have a letter from Aaron Walkby, Director of the BC SPCA, regarding a uh, request for support for the BC SPCA COVID-19. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? I'll second. Councillor Kemp, any opposed? Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Earl. Um, just, uh, I, I mean, it's uh, unfortunate to hear that they've been hit financially by this issue. Um, I, I'd be interested to see where that 628792 comes from. It's pretty significant amount. Um, and if there is a contract of service, if they're looking for supplementary funding for the service they provide, above and beyond that, um, I, I'd like to see a bit more detail before approving that. Thank you. Maybe I'll pass it over to administration. Do we have any, un any uh, uh, Kevin or to Blair, do we have any understanding or um, knowledge in terms of what they're uh, suggesting, where their loss is coming from? And Your Worship, I'll maybe start this time. No, this is a letter we received uh, for Council's consideration. The 6,287.92 is obviously, they've used some formula to come up with it. That has not been shared with us, uh, or certainly with myself to this point. Um, so how they do it this is from uh, this letter comes forward uh, from the director of philanthropy and guardian uh, with the SPCA the letter is addressed from uh, the head office in Vancouver as well not the local office I'll point out okay so the anticipated loss of uh, funding is uh, as a result of uh, what I'm when I see that is uh, anticipating they're losing uh, donations yes. uh, from the community and the region not from a loss of fees for licensing and things like that, but if it comes from philanthropy, I'm gonna make that assumption. It is all in when they adopt pets and so on, yes, but this is their projected revenue loss at this point and the impact on the Dawson Creek organization. Thank you. Further discussion, Council? Um, you were just curious to if um, we're gonna have staff look into this, that that money uh, isn't a loss under an umbrella of gaming funds that the BCNPCA may get because all 
uh, gaming grants were um, stop, put on hold, I think $3 million, so that's been put into emergency funding in other areas. So I would be interested to know if this isn't just specific to Dawson Creek RSLP as it is maybe a uh, loss of umbrella funding that was then divvied up to different branches. Okay, so do we, we want to make a motion. We direct administration to get to the local branch to get some explanation on the uh, loss of funding that they uh, indicate in their letter. I would make that motion, yeah. Councillor Wilbur, second. I'll second. Okay. Councillor Kemp, thank you. Discussion? Uh, Paul here. Yep. Yeah. You know, if we ask for more information, what we're doing is we're implying that we are, you know, considering uh, paying more. And we are helping out SPCA considerably already. And uh, I would want to see us, especially in this uh, time that we're in here, to put it any further. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Further discussion? Um, Councillor Wilder, I don't think we're implying anything here. I, I think um, we would have, if it comes from umbrella funding, I believe then we would have the ability to say uh, to our provincial government, you know, maybe in this area they don't want to cut that specific funding considering it affects the whole province. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion on the motion? Ready for the question? All opposed? Opposed. Councillor Javekov, Councillor uh, Parswell, thank you. Uh, the motion carries. Will it record as opposed? Councillor Javekov, Councillor Parswell. Thank you, Council. Uh, seven, item seven, a reports. Uh, report number 20041 from the executive assistant regarding the amended acting mayor schedule for 2020. And um, I, I guess. Um, I'd like to speak to it if I can get, um, well, we get, let's have somebody make the motion first and then I'll speak to it. All right, make the motion. You want to read out? I, um, I, sure, if you like, please. The report number 20041 from the corporate officer re amended acting mass schedule for 2020 be received. Further, the acting mayor schedule for 2020 be amended to indicate the following. April, Councillor Kent. May and June, Councillor Javakov. July, August and September, Councillor Wilbur. October, November, December, Councillor Earl. Thank you, Councillor Parslow. Do I have a seconder? I'll second. Councillor Kemp, thank you. Uh, we, uh, when we were reviewing the acting mayor schedule and we had anticipated we'd have a by-election uh, that would bring us uh, back to our full complement and the new councillor elected um, would have then been placed into the acting mayor schedule for November, December to finish the year out. But, uh, by the, but we have no idea at this point when we're going to be able to hold that by-election and I didn't feel it was fair that if we have a new councillor elected um, and um, and they get elected in October, November, and we all of a sudden pop them into the acting mayor schedule. So I've just extended the uh, terms for Councillor Wilbur, Councillor Earl at the end of the year to fill the three months rather than the normal two, and that's uh, just for the ease of being able to have those councillors in place, and we don't have to worry about the by-election. Any further comments for council? Ready for the question? Any opposed? Thank you, Council. Uh, that's carried. Uh, 7.2, we have report 20042 from the City Planner regarding a development variance permit 2003 for Lord Poe at 1648 Alaska Avenue. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Councillor Wilbur. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder? I'll second. 
Councillor Kemp, thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Wilbur. So normally I probably would look at this differently. Um, however, I take into consideration uh, the hot key that's right across uh, the road from this property, as well as the uh, um, enter exit for home hardware on Alaska Avenue, and it's already a very busy area. So I believe, uh, given this property sits between Alaska Avenue and the railroad tracks, this is the best alternative uh, for access to that property. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, administration? Uh, nothing to add, Your Worship. This is a request. The access would come off of uh, 17th Street. They do and have worked with uh, Home Hardware, though, on a joint access through their property as well. Uh, I note that they will, in the uh, paper that you have before you, will have a discussion with uh, CN as well. Thank you. And so what this is, is giving uh, a development uh, to proceed for a new facility at the corner of 17th Street and Alaska Avenue? This is to vary and for our setback. This sure. is the variance permit for the uh, access in, access out. Sure. Sorry, I should have made that clear. And this, this uh, access gives them the ability to develop that corner lot for a facility building. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Further com uh, comment from Council? You ready for the question? Any opposed? Thank you, Council. It's carried. 7.3, we have report number 20048 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding our 2019 draft financial plan. I'd like to move this, if I may. Go ahead, Councillor Parslow. Report number 20-048 from the Chief Financial Officer of a 2019 draft financial statement. We received further the council approved the 2019 draft financial statements and the 2019 reserve transfer schedule is presented. And further, the 2019 audit financial statements be brought forward before we approve at the council meeting on April the 27th, 2020. Thank you, Councillor Parslow. Do I have a seconder? Okay. Councillor Kemp, thank you. Discussion? Maybe if I can pass it over to administration for comments and I will look to Flavia. This is, uh, once we approve the draft, it will then be at the auditor uh, to finalize, give us their determination based on our uh, draft um, financial statements. They will then come to our next meeting, whether that be via call or however, for the formal presentation of our auditors to counsel your worship. Flavia, anything to add? Have no. I missed anything? <laughs> no, you haven't missed anything. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, and the highlights for us in terms of um, the financial position for the statements for 2019, uh, as we look at the year now and rolling, was a very positive in terms of our expenses, uh, revenues, and transferring uh, that balance back into our surplus of approximately, and I'm, I'm going to use an approximate of $3 million, Flavi? Yeah, exactly. I think the good news also is the cash flow. Uh, there was an increase of about $5 million moved to, to our uh, cash. Of course, that counts as capital, uh, the, the PRA funds that we receive, reductions on contract services, um, the whole project of strategic uh, project, uh, the initiative that Consul had last year, of reductions, so all this contributed to funds coming to our cash. So that's a good message there. Yeah. It, and I, I want to highlight that because I think honestly, uh, people, it's easy to lose sight of the work that the city and council and administration and staff have done over the last uh, few years and in terms of trying to bring that strong financial future to our organization, to our community. And this demonstrates the work that council did in 2019, 2018, setting 2019, um, and there you see the results of it, a 700 or $800,000 less in operating costs uh, consolidated over the year and another uh, two or three million that's now rolling into our reserves to continue to build that healthy financial position. And I'm gonna speak to that just a little bit because the frustration when you see the comments about people looking at our community and you see it commonly, people saying, oh, Dawson's broke. And that couldn't be further from the truth. And to me, I guess the point I want to make for people who are watching and for people who follow along, this is about the financial work that this organization and this council and administration have done 
to try to ensure that we put a strong financial future in place. And I think this financial statement to me validates that work we did in 2019 is now demonstrated mm -hmm. in the financial position that our uh, organization, our city is in today. Mm -hmm. okay. Very much, yeah. Your Worship. Um, just following through the financial footing and the direction the council has taken in the strategic priorities has made some very favorable changes in the budget of the city of Dawson Creek. Uh, I would think for if anybody was to suggest the city was broke, they haven't read the financials of the city. I think the trend is in a very favorable position. Now having said that, uh, we find ourselves in a position as we go through this uh, crisis the world is facing that uh, hopefully we'll be able to come out the other side uh, with the city's financials at least in somewhat reasonable shape. I, time is going to determine that, but going into it, I, I think we should all consider ourselves uh, fortunate to be in a city in the position we're in. Yeah, I agree. And I want to pass on our thanks to staff, uh, to our administration, uh, to folks who have put in the effort, and to council who have put in the work and effort to try to ensure that we continue to move this bar higher for the financial position of the city and these uh, financial statements demonstrate that today. Council, any further comments? Yes, uh, Councillor Parslow here. Go ahead, Councillor Parslow. Just um, a couple of questions. Uh, I'm relating here to the subheading in Canada Event Centre and Dawson Creek Tourism. It reads, note 16 to the financial statements highlights the transactions for the Encounter Event Center and Dawson Creek Tourism. The 2019 net cost of the city for Encounter Event Center amounted to 1.65 million compared to 1.54 million in 2018. Uh, can I be reminded of the reason for that increase? Is it uh, contractual, inflation or what? Yeah, uh, on the budget of 2019 was approved the increase because of uh, the employee tax, um, employee health tax that was included, uh, that was projected, and then considering the revised budget. So the budget, the budget approved in 2019 was 1.65, which reflected this employee health tax. Thank you. Uh, just continuing, if I may. Yeah. And the net cost for Dawson Creek tourism in 2019 was 587,000 compared to 435,000 in 2018. Is, um, is there something else uh, other than, is, is some about Hockey Canada um, transfer money, is that linked to that? Yes, exactly. The biggest portion has to do with the Hawk Canada transferring uh, the funds, which was sitting as a savings last year, and right now is offsetting the cost that uh, incurred this year. Okay, that's what I assumed from the previous paragraph. And finally, gross revenue for Encounter Event Centre increased by approximately 225000 and the gross profit decreased by 83,000. Um, so am I to assume that the expenditures exceeded the $225,000 revenue by 83,000? Yes, you are correct. And is there any explanation that you received for that? Y yes, normally uh, this has to do depending on the event some event can generate uh, the uh, the profit, others have the loss, so that's the a net effect of the events that incur during the year. Oh, I see, so there were fewer, uh, fewer profitable or less profitable events. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor. Further comments, further discussion from Council? Are you ready for the question? All those opposed? Thank you. It passes, carries. Thank you, Flavia. Blair, thank you. Thank you. Um, item 7.4, we have report number 2043 from the General Manager of Community Services regarding requests for quotation uh, for electrical services, and that's our main contract. Mm -hmm. 
Motion. Thank you, Councillor Parswell. I'll read it out. It makes it a little e easier if that's okay. That report number 2004. 2043 from the Parks and Facilities Manager regarding the request for quotations 202003 electrical services, the main electrical contract be received. Further, the Council award the request for quotations for the 202003 electrical services main electrical contract to K&O Electric for a five year term commencing June 1st, 2020 and ending May 31st, 2025 with an option to renew for an additional year. Do I have a seconder for the motion? I'll second. Councillor Wilbur, thank you. Discussion? Kevin, administration? Uh, nothing to add unless Kevin, do you? Uh, no, nothing on my end. This is actually in uh, Ross's department. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize, Kevin. Ross? <laughs> thank you. Through, through your worship, I did notice uh, one correction there. It's Thank you, Ross. Any further discussion, Council? You ready for the question? Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. 7.5. We have report number 20044 from the General Manager of Community Services regarding the request for quotations for the 202004 electrical street lighting contract. I will move the recommendation. Councillor Wilbur, thank you. And this uh, recommendation is for the report 2044 from the Parks and Facilities Manager regarding request for quotations 202004 electrical services, street lighting be received. And further, the council award the request for quotations for the 202004 electrical services, street lighting contract to K&O Electric for a five year term commencing June 1st, 2020 and ending May 31st, 2025 with an option to renew for an additional year. Do have a seconder? Sorry. Thank you, Councillor Parslow. Discussion? Administration, anything? Nothing further. Thank you. Ready for the question, Council? Any opposed? Thank you, that motion carries. Uh, 7.6, we have report number 20046 from the General Manager of Development Services regarding the request for quotations for the 202006 crushed gravel. So moved. Councillor Parslow, thank you. Report number 20046 from the General Manager of Development Services be reserved, received. And further, that the Council award the request for quotations 202006 for crushed gravel to Nels Oscar Limited for the amounts of 26,880 in 2020 and 26,880 in 2021, plus the applicable taxes. Do I have a seconder for the motion? I'll second. Councillor Earl, thank you. Discussion? Comments? Council, you ready for the question? Any opposed? Thank you, that motion carries. Uh, I'm seeming to doing a lot of talking. You're doing a marvelous job, Your <laughs> Worship. <laughs> kind of like having council here. <laughs> I miss you guys. 7-7, seven, seven, we have report number 20047 from the General Manager of Development Services regarding the request for quotation for the 2020-07 Painted markings. I'll move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Wilbur. Do you want to read it or do you want me to? <laughs> I, you offered, so <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. That report 2047 from the General Manager of Development Services be received and further that Council award the request for quotations 202007 parking and traffic pavement markings to Line West Limited for the amounts of 29,915 in 2020 and 29,915 in 2021 plus the applicable taxes. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Parslow, thank you. Discussion? You ready for the question? Any opposed? Thank you, Council. That carries. And 7.8, we have report number 20049 from the General Manager of Development Services regarding request for quotations for the 202005 dust control contract. Moved. Sorry. 
Thank you, Councillor Parslow. Report 2049 from the General Manager of Development Services be received and further that Council award the request for quotations 2020-05 dust control to NSC Materials Limited for the amounts of $44,940 in 2020 and $46,290 in 2021 plus the applicable taxes. Do we have a seconder? Okay. Councillor Earl, thank you. Discussion? Ready for the question? All, any opposed? Thank you, that motion carries. Um, we'll now move to bylaws. And we have bylaw number, uh, sorry, 8.1, report 2020-2024, financial plan bylaw number 4440-2020 for consideration of third reading. Councillor Parslow, thank you. Do I have a seconder? Second. Councillor Earl, thank you. Now, with all of that we are experiencing in uh, the world today and it's how it's turned us ourselves upside down, um, by approving third and we go to final, I'm assuming within the next two weeks to a month, um, in order to have it completed by our early May timelines. If we need to do anything in regards to adjusting our financial plan as it relates to the budget, to rates, to whatever, um, do we still have that opportunity in the next, either the, before we give it final reading? Your Worship, yes. Once we give it final reading, we have the ability to amend our budget uh, at any time, as I understand. And particularly with what we see in the world today, there's no question that uh, this budget, uh, to the best of our ability, is presented to this point in time, um, but it will change. Yeah. And so an amended budget will become forthcoming based on really what happens is as we look to the future, but we don't have the ability to present different numbers today yeah. just because of the unknowns we're seeing. Yeah, I guess that's the aspect that we're in, right? We're, we've, we've built a budget over the last five or six or seven months that Council now has started to work on this, and that's the budget that we are dealing with today. Um, I think the hard part for us all is that world has turned upside down over the last really two or three weeks, and, and um, the implications to us and to our residents and to our business community um, in terms of adjusting that, and if we lock this in without uh, having some fuller appreciation of that. I guess that's my only question. Flavi? Yes, uh, just to add, so yes, the budget uh, you can amend at any time during the year. The meal rate that's going to be used for tax purpose, we still have until May 15. So we haven't put the bylaw yet for the meal rate. Okay. Right? So that's we have until May 15. Okay, good. Thank you. Councilor, Councilor Parson, go ahead. Yeah. In, in making this motion, all that you have said and staff have said um, aligns with the reason why I felt able to support this third reading. I mean, a lot of good work happened, but we are facing difficult challenges. And I see happening, um, I see us having a few emergency meetings uh, very shortly. Um, I'd, look, I'd like to call them planning meetings. Uh, and putting forward assumptions that we're going to operate with because we are only going to be able to work on assumptions but we should declare those assumptions and plan accordingly and get some real analysis done on, on impact and uh, long-term impact short-term impact so I, I see a busy month ahead of us with a series of, uh, of pretty uh, pretty detailed meetings happening uh, absolutely for sure Council, any further comments, questions? Thank you. Uh, any, uh, Council, are you ready for the question? Any opposed? Thank you, the motion carries. Third reading. Uh, Mayor's business, and um, I just, honestly, it's hard not to uh, have a, a COVID-19 update uh, these days because it's being updated almost daily. And certainly we've all been, I think, involved to different degrees in terms of components and aspects around it. I can only say that um, we continue down the road of staying engaged and involved. Uh, certainly Blair and I have been in regular um, uh, updates from the province. They're regular weekly meetings from the Minister of Social Housing, 
or Minister of Housing, sorry, and Minister of Health, Peace, Chief Medical Health Officer, Minister of Public Safety, and really just updating us in terms of the things that are going on. We also had an update from Northern Health along with uh, the various ministries of emergency management and the deputies from those organizations as it relates to industrial camps was a big topic last week, uh, obviously with the Site C camp. So uh, we just continue to try to reinforce the message about keeping our foot on the gas, about staying safe, staying home, wash your hands, social distancing, crowds, all of that stuff. I know we've really been uh, focused uh, obviously on the concerns about enforcement of these public health orders and the concerns around how and who and who has the authority to enforce them and, um, and I know that was a, a big topic. We still continue to push the province on, we just dealt with our financial plan but the whole aspect of deferral of the tax penalties that's going to come in July and how are we going to deal with that. And so we just continue to try to stay engaged on behalf of our community and I certainly have been, and as, as has Blair, to be able to stay engaged in that and try to ensure that we keep that communication uh, of the community and for the community up to speed. I'm so proud of our community in terms of how for the most part people are being diligent, how they're staying disciplined about what they're doing in their daily habits. You're not getting it all and there's frustration from people out there about uh, concerns about people and organizations not perhaps putting as much attention or focus to it, the public health orders that they should be in. You know, that old, we're not looking for perfection, well we are in this case, but really trying to keep that focus up for people in terms of what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, and so Blair, can I get you to talk to that enforcement piece just uh, quickly? So I know it's been a hot topic for folks. Certainly, Your Worship. So presently, uh, the province has reached out to local governments around the province and asked if our bylaw officers could help act as eyes and ears on the ground. We respond uh, to situations that they see themselves or we respond to calls we get based on people's concerns that somebody uh, for example, may have returned home and isn't adhering to the self-isolation. So the government has asked us to be their eyes and ears, to work with them, but not to, we are not as bylaw officers in the city of Dawson Creek in a position to go out and issue fines uh, or do that, the enforcement part. We are there to relay the information. There are uh, people that may be unaware of what the requirements are, so we've taken on that role. We've dealt with numerous calls. Uh, I would like to say thank you to our bylaw staff for going out and doing the work that they have to do. Uh, we're not sure whether the province will enhance the order for our bylaw officers to have to take the next step, but as it is right now, it is really we go out. If somebody is in violation, we'll inform them of what the procedure is uh, from the provincial health officer's orders, and uh, it's we continue to work at that, Your Worship. Thank you. Um, and so we're, honestly I'm encouraged by the provincial uh, results that we're showing in, pro in the province about flattening the curve and I think uh, Dr. Henry and the province have done really a great job of keeping everybody informed and what we need to do and you're seeing the results in the province of BC of staying um, now where we're, we were in, with Ontario and Quebec for a bit in the initial stages and now we're uh, really showing very positive so we just need to continue to reinforce that. Um, we, we, I want to talk about something right now that I'm really worried about and, and uh, starting to turn I, I think my uh, mind to and it's about the recovery of our community and the economy and, and I don't know what that's going to look like but I'm really really worried about how we recover economically. Uh, I know the feds are, federal government's worried about it, the provincial government's worried about it and I think for us as a municipal government we have to be worried about it in terms of how we're going to assist and what we do to in order to do that. Um, it's so early in terms of the things that are going on and I know people are responding in different ways at the local level but uh, I absolutely believe and uh, as we talked about in the financial plan that we need to begin to turn our minds to this in terms of what are the things that we can do as a community as a municipal government to help respond to our residents and business community and I'm especially concerned about the small business community because that is what builds to me the people that are hiring jobs in our restaurants and our hotels and the retail and services and all of that stuff. We, I think we absolutely need to be focused on that and there's limited ways in which we can do that but I think this now we need to start to turn our minds to it 
start to look at see how we can be and it, can we be innovative, creative with our financial positions to, to try to find a way to move forward with that and we got to get council engaged in that in the very near future and with our administration and staff to say what are the options and how and what can we do to begin to move that uh, forward in a constructive way that we can be there to respond on behalf of the retail the business and I say that because if people don't have jobs that doesn't matter what else we do they can't pay their bills they can't pay their food and groceries and live and it's the spiral of a community and I'm, I'm turning my head to it that I think we need to begin to have that discussion and and how we move forward with it so I just leave it at that uh, and that's all I have under mayor's business. Does anybody have any questions, comments from council? Yes, uh, Charlie. Yes. In light, in light of what you said, uh, Mayor, um, I believe that we should uh, try to disband him from this meeting. Uh, schedule at least two what I'm calling special planning meetings. Try to set finally that light in our tax mill rates for the budget year. So I, I think over the next few weeks we should schedule at least two meetings uh, to, to wrestle with some of the issues that, we're, that you've been talking about. Yeah, I think we'll start that. Uh, we'll have that discussion this week, Blair and uh, uh, Flavia and Brenda and I and Kevin and Ross. And we'll start that discussion. And, and uh, I agree. I agree completely that I think council needs to start to have some discussion about it and how and what we're going to be able to do to respond in a way that makes sense for our community and our business and our residents and on and on. And so we'll start that work this week. And for sure, we'll be uh, scheduling something in the very near future. We need to because we got the time crunch coming. And we're still waiting a little bit from the province to kind of and the feds to see how they're kind of working their way to uh, as well. So that's kind of adding into it as well. So we'll go to work on it, and for sure we will be meeting again in the very near future, I believe. Thank you for that. Any other comments, Council? Thank you. So diary, anything? Nothing to report, Your Worship. Uh, consent calendar, we got a couple of items. Motion to uh, for the consent. Councillor Parswell, thank you. Second? I second. Thank you, Earl. Councillor Earl, thank you. Uh, anybody want to lift anything from the consent calendar? Thank you. Uh, any opposed? It's carried. Strategic priorities. And I think, honestly, we are, as I think we're going to have to do something, but I, I think we've got to get through the next two or three or four months, depending on how long this goes before we can begin to have any kind of a strategic uh, exercise as it relates to 2021 and beyond because uh, this we're still in the middle of this that uh, impact to our community I don't think we can set a strategic direction because it's going to hinge so much on what we're going to be impacted by and how we're going to be impacted by this which is so uncertain right now Blair Right through your worship, I would agree at this point I think the key and it goes back to Councillor Parslow's uh, a recommendation earlier that we're going to have to over the next short time frame have a couple of meetings to discuss the possibilities of what we can or may uh, be able to do to help offset the impact that our city's facing on the residents and businesses but all of the good work uh, that has been done to this point doesn't mean uh, that it hasn't gone for naught because it has put us in a position that we may be able to consider things the one thing I will point out is by law we cannot deficit budget uh, at this point so it is not a something we can look at but because of the solid work that the councils have done uh, getting us to the financial position we're in it'll allow us to have the discussion uh, moving forward yeah you know and as I look at the strategic priorities where we say in seven years we want to have 85 percent of the Peace River agreement money moved to uh, operations is that it, we, until we get through this is that going to be a reasonable time frame and is that a reasonable expectation I think we need to be able to review that uh, strategic priority that we set in May of 2019 we accomplished some of the stuff around the objectives around transit and fire department but we still got some work on tourism sub-regional and cultural services funding uh, those are still ongoing so I think it to me it's just too early for us to be able to understand how this is impacting our community and our businesses before to be able to start a 
strategic exercise at this time. I would agree, Your Worship. So we, we don't need... Uh, can, go ahead, Councillor Parzal. I, I think we always have to be thinking around the long term uh, and as well as short term. And I think probably we'll find that some of our discussions in the next uh, few weeks uh, align quite, clo quite closely to our long term uh, strategies. Yeah, I, like I said, just honestly for me, it's just until we um, work our way through this issue that we have that's been uh, you know, completely up, turning upside down a community, a country, a province, that we need to really understand that to be able to then lock into our strategic exercise of what does 2021 and beyond look like for us. Thank you. Do we need... We don't need a motion to do anything. We're not doing with anything with it. Thank you, Brenda. Media questions? No media. Um, so thank you, Council. I have a motion that we would recess to close, um, if I can. Come Councillor Wilbur, thank you. Second? Second. Councillor Kemp, thank you. Any opposed? Thank you, it's carried. We'll recess for uh, five minutes. Good job.